protein requirements for sports page number 75 So we all have an RTA basic recommended allowances for uh, healthy adults. So it's around 0 0.8 to 1 gram. Okay, those who are doing a minimal exercise for them also, they can just maintain 0 0.8 to 1 gram per kg of their body weight per day on a daily basis. And slowly when your endurance and the strength training and etc, it increases your activity level increases. Accordingly, the protein intake also has to increase. Okay, so the activity level is also a range of so protein, protein intake should also be within that range. On days when you are resting, when you're not doing much of the physical activity or endurance training, etc., you can cut down your protein intake and vice versa. On heavy training days, you have to incorporate more protein in your, in your diet. So it's a range. The protein intake will be somewhere between 1.4 gram per day to uh, per kg body weight per day to two gram of protein per kg per, uh, body weight per day okay so you can see here which kind of different exercises are there endurance intermittent sports uh, contact sports strength training etc the highest amount of protein is taken by athletes who perform strength uh, weightlifting exercises etc also people who go for gym and all for bodybuilding and all the same amount of protein intake should be followed so why do you need protein in the first place? First of all, it helps in your growth, repair and replacement of tissue. Okay, growth, well, basically uh, till your adolescence, post that little bit of growth and also the production of growth hormone. Along with that, the protein intake focuses more on the repair of your degenerated tissues. Okay, on a daily basis, each and every cell in your body is undergoing degeneration and regeneration. And protein, the enzymes that are made of protein, which help in this uh, degeneration and regeneration, it, uh, it is based on amino acids, which again come from protein intake. Okay, It can protect you from illness because the antibodies which your body make, it is usually the basic structure of an antibody is protein. Okay, Antibodies are considered equivalent to protein. Enzymes and hormones to make these also, you require protein. Fluid balance in your body. If you are protein deficient, you will have an overall swelling in your body. You must have seen this. People who suffer from kidney related diseases, their protein intake is quite low. Okay, because they their diet is restricted. Not all the kidney disorders, but most of it. Okay, uh, it's a protein restrictive diet which they follow. Still, even with all the medical management, surgical or dietary management they are at the risk of getting swollen up usually on their extremities legs etc okay this is because of protein deficiency uh, do you have any idea why protein deficiency could have led to edema anyone any idea why why what is the relationship between protein and your extracellular fluid edema is a uh, in general, what is edema? The fluid that are supposed to be within your cells, okay, it gets out, it leaks out, and it stays in your extracellular area. So why, why, what is the relation between protein and these extracellular fluid? See, all the cells in your body, okay, the cell wall, specifically the cell wall of any cell in your body is made up of protein as well as phospholipids, okay. So when uh, you are protein deficient, the integrity of this protein rich cell wall, okay, it takes a hit. And when the cell wall does not have a good integrity, whatever is supposed to stay inside the cell, it can freely come out, okay? So you are at higher risk of getting swellings, okay? The same happens when you have less amount of protein within your vessels, okay? When the blood is, blood is in circulation within your vessels, when, uh, when you have a protein deficient blood, there is nothing to hold on to the water content of the blood and to keep them in circulation. What happens instead? this water content in your blood, it will ooze out of the vessels and get settled down 
outside the blood vessels near the extracellular tissue okay so that's also another way of why it adds on to your edema or swelling okay and then obviously protein gives you energy okay not as much as carbohydrates or fat but still it gives you energy when you are carbohydrate deficient or fat deficient your body goes to protein for its breakdown and to give out glucose as well as energy okay so these are the functions of protein within one's body just a bird's eye view of the functions of protein within your body so amino acids uh, we all know that proteins are made up of amino acids okay and when this protein reaches your intestine they break down and they further give out amino acids so amino acids are the building blocks of the protein what it means that there are around uh, 20 amino acids few of them are essential not essential we'll see that later so these amino acids the 20 different kinds of amino acids they form different patterns okay they form different combinations within your body to give out more than one like to human knowledge to human brain we only know about one like protein there may be much more than that which we have not researched on okay so so far about the data one lakh approximately one lakh protein different kind of protein we do produce in our body okay just based on these 20 kinds of essential and non essential amino acids okay so amino acids are the building blocks of protein this protein go inside your body get digested get metabolized to give out further amino acids these amino acids are further used to make different combinations of proteins okay within your body that's how the metabolism goes on so which type of exercise and how much per kg uh, gram of protein uh, do you require based on your body weight so minimal exercise or formal exercise like if you go for a walk for one, one hour brisk walking for one hour jogging for half an hour okay so this all comes under minimal formal exercise also yoga if you practice yoga that also comes under minimal formal exercise so if you follow these kind of um, activities you just you can just limit your protein intake to 0.75 or 0.8 gram per kg body weight per day okay more than one hour per day whatever kind of exercise strength is not mentioned endurance is not mentioned but when you spend uh, more than one hour per day in any kind of physical activity okay one to two point one one point two gram of protein endurance at least can follow one to one to one point two to one point four gram and above that up to two two gram of protein per kg body weight that's only for people who undergo strength training so these are the different types of uh, essential non essential and conditionally essential uh, uh, non essential uh, amino acids conditionally or non essential means um, only in in cer certain th circumstances your body cannot synthesize this okay only in certain deficiencies certain circumstances circumstances your body cannot synthesize this specific amino acid so it is better to have them through diet okay but if you do not suffer from any health conditions your body is uh, without any issue it is making all this non non essential amino acid essential amino acids the pink column which you see on your left uh, are the ones which your body cannot make okay also about histidine okay histidine uh, is essential for babies okay uh, in uh, the first amino uh, essential amino acid which you see on the pink column in your textbook it is given on non essential column okay but uh, it has an age factor to it so for babies histidine is essential but once you grow up it's it becomes a non essential amino acid okay so protein and exercise based on again the same thing your uh, your lifestyle uh, they have given directly they have given here different grams okay based on our uh, reference indian male and indian female uh, and also 
uh, like for a 70 kg man and for who are doing the 70 kg of man who is doing different types of training if he is in a sedentary lifestyle just 56 grams of protein per day that's enough strength training highest gram of protein that is 119 grams endurance 84 to 98 grams depending on how much hour they are spending uh, on endurance training if it is one hour one and a half or two keep it below uh, below 90 if it is more than two hours of endurance training then close to 100 that's it so in detail you will find find this information on page number 76 onwards Then, uh, how to minimize your protein break, uh, breakdown when you are doing exercises, okay? Like, for example, if you are not having enough carbohydrates before, like, pre, if you're not having pre-workout snack and when your glycogen stores are uh, depleted, okay, still to survive for energy, the next stop is your muscle protein. So, in which all conditions, Okay, which uh, which all are the conditions which will make sure that there is a breakdown of your muscle protein? Okay, we have to prevent. But like when, whenever you are uh, doing this strength training or endurance training, etc., you have to prevent this particular phenomenon. Okay, muscle protein breakdown has to be prevented as much as possible because if your body is under under a stage of muscle protein breakdown obviously you have to focus a lot on your protein intake on the same day okay you have to replenish the lost protein you have to make sure the muscle protein synthesis mps takes place that night itself when you are resting okay so we uh, first and foremost try to prevent this stage in your activity okay try to prevent the muscle protein breakdown stage so just by the uh, looking at the graph here what do you think in which conditions okay in which conditions uh in which conditions would you see a lot of muscle pre uh, protein breakdown do you uh, if you have ate something or if you're not ate what is the condition just by looking at the graph what do you think and also further details are given on the right side different colors what are what is the meaning of it what do you think? What do you make out from this particular graph? Did you understand the graph? If, if anyone has understood the graph, just, just give your small conclusion. Okay, in in a, in a single line, give a small conclusion about this graph in the chat box. Yes, muscle protein breakdown is quite high when you are fasting. For example, when you go to work out on an empty stomach, as soon as, as soon as you wake up, okay, just have a cup of water and then you run to work out. That's when you lose a lot of muscle protein. Also, when you even if you have have had something but it was it was a kind of food it was just a fruit okay let's say if it was a papaya or something which had a low glycemic index okay your body is working on low uh, low insulin okay and any any snack which was low in yes low in carbohydrates okay or low glycemic index food so if you had that as your pre workout snack obviously your body will have a low insulin level Okay, even when you work out during a, on a low insulin level, you will lose a lot of muscle protein. Okay, so the best option is when you when you have at least high insulin or medium insulin. If you go for very high insulin, it's not good for your health. Okay, we wouldn't we wouldn't suggest that. But if you work on a medium to high insulin, that's ideal because you will not lose a lot of muscle protein. You will just lose up the glycogen store, which you have just filled up with a high carb diet. Okay. So that's about how you can minimize your protein breakdown during exercise. If you if that's your goal, you do not want to lose your muscle mass. Do not do any workout on a fasting stomach. Okay. And or on a low insulin body. Now, pre-workout uh, nutrition, uh, two to three hours before your workout, 
you can have a good meal okay a, a complete meal which has protein carbs fat etc okay a good meal either breakfast uh, lunch okay a good meal but 2 to 3 hours before you hit the workout okay if it is less than 2 hours remaining for your workout easy to digest food protein like oatmeal okay oats or some chia pudding okay a glass of milk with some uh, dry fruits in it these are easy to digest uh, protein and carbs okay if there is less than 1 hour remaining for your workout any any smoothies okay fruit smoothies is good or, or just plain water or any sports drink okay it's it's good but you are mo uh, mostly uh, focusing on carbohydrates here when you when there is just one hour left for your exercise you have to focus on the carbohydrate intake not on the protein intake so these these are the different types of examples what you can have uh, obviously you do have a vegetarian option as well for in, instead of chicken breast if the athlete is vegetarian give the substitution uh, substitute uh, substitute of a chicken breast okay like sauteed and boiled um, soya chunks okay not the soya beans soya chunks really good source of protein okay if it is an indian meal chapatis and a soya bean curry soya chunk curry okay or a soya bean biryani or something like that okay these are good sources of protein as well as carb so after workout you have to now replenish protein as well as glycogen because just like uh, your carbohydrate protein will also get replenished the amino acid part of it will get replenished on the very same day Okay, if you are giving your, if you are fueling up your body with protein and glycogen soon after your workout, it will help you out to do a damage control. Okay, with, uh, on the very same day, within the 24 hours, damage control could be done. Okay, so use 4 is to 1 ratio of simple carbs to protein. Okay, 4 part, if it is uh, 4 part of carbohydrates, then just 1 part of protein that's the ideal goal here this four is to one ratio they have not mentioned in the textbook only for uh, a ratio that they have mentioned is during exercise uh, or protein uh, or just before exercise two is to one or one is to one uh, you can follow but post workout uh, they have not mentioned the ratio as such so you can follow this four is to one ratio four parts of carbohydrate and one part of protein the source you can decide which source you want to have so during prolonged or intense exercise, glycogen will play a very critical role as energy source. The first and the foremost thing that gets depleted is glycogen. If you exercise for 90 minutes or longer, twice a day, that's when um, a protein mix and a carbohydrate mix workout can give you the enough amount of glycogen as well as do the damage control, okay? And do the repair of the lost muscle mass. So that this should be the ideal ratio of your post-workout meal. Not post-workout snack, post-workout meal. Distribution of dietary protein intake throughout the day among athletes. But nowadays, okay, like uh, earlier we have said that this, this is the particular gram per kg body weight you have to follow per day. But nowadays, all the conferences and the international nutrition committees and all, they are slightly deviating from the protein distribution throughout the day. They are focusing more on per meal because what you have done just before that meal or what you are going to do just after, after this meal, that is more important. So the protein distribution is now uh, focused more on distributing the protein uh, quantity per meal. Because if, if you are doing too much of activity in the morning, you are you will be given too much of protein during the morning and lunch and some protein in the uh, night to uh, for the repair purposes. Okay. If you're doing uh, too much of training at the night in the evening time, you will have a heavy protein diet during dinner and during breakfast. Okay, so that's how nowadays the focus is shifting it's not completely like it's not the thumb rule but it's uh, the focus of the protein distribution is shifting meal wise as opposed to earlier when we had just throughout the day doesn't matter at what time you are doing the exercise 
at the end of the day, this much amount of protein should be in your system. That was the earlier set of rules. But nowadays, it is much more concentrated. Okay, each meal counts. Okay, so this is just a the graph we, which we have given here. It's just a general assumption of uh, what percentage of protein should one have during their breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And you must have seen whenever they are uh, mentioning snack here. Okay, morning snack, afternoon snack, or evening snack. It does not have much protein. Okay, protein focus. Protein is focused on the major meals of the day. That is breakfast, lunch, and dinner. During the snack, they are, they are focusing more on carbohydrate as well as good fats. So the highest amount of protein intake is at dinner time during your dinner because when you sleep, we'll come to that later at the end. When you sleep, a lot of repair work goes on in your body when you're sleeping. When you sleep on an empty stomach, devoid of any protein, the lost muscle will not be gained easily. But those who are sleeping on a stomach, which is on a male, which is full with protein sources, okay, they, they've uh, performed better during their athletic activity. Okay, their endurance have seen to increase. Some survey was done, you can read about it in your textbook, it is given. Okay, so uh, the, the athletes who sleep with a protein rich meal as a as the last part of the of the dinner okay they uh, it has seen that their endurance level as well as their uh, mps that is muscle protein synthesis levels is much higher than the people who avoid protein during dinner okay uh, am i audible is my voice clear now? Or am I audible? Is my voice clear now? Okay, so uh, the importance of this particular slide is that earlier, okay, earlier days, the focus was much on, much more on, it doesn't matter at what time you are doing your workout or endurance activity, doesn't matter. At the end of the day, this much gram of protein should have been, should be in your system. Okay, that was the thumb rule in the yesterday years. But nowadays, the focus is shifting more to the what amount of protein you're consuming per meal, okay? Earlier, the protein, uh, the meals did focus on protein and less on carbohydrate. And the snacks was focusing more on carbohydrates, whatever snack you're having morning, evening, or lunch. Nowadays, even for snacks, okay, they are incorporating some protein requirement in the snacks also what what you have throughout the day okay so now the focus is shifting slowly for example if you have a lot of uh, training uh, in the morning hours okay in the morning hours at night you should have high protein intake as well as in the morning you should have high protein intake earlier days what it was, it was believed since breakfast is the first meal of the day, it is supposed to keep you energetic, okay? You should have, you should indulge more on a carbohydrate rich breakfast. Protein was not given much of an importance when it comes to breakfast. But now you must have seen how times have changed, okay? Nowadays, even from breakfast itself, not just carbohydrates, but breakfast is more concentrated on your protein intake as well because this all revolves around how much 
muscle mass you have lost how much muscle you have repaired back and how is the protein synthesis within your body going on okay so throughout the entire big meals which you have in a, in a day breakfast lunch or dinner protein is a very important challenge for athletes okay it's not a not just important factor but nowadays incorporating and following one's protein requirement is the greatest challenge of any dietitian and nutritionist okay so protein timing before bed this is important this was this is what i was saying people who sleep on an empty stomach without protein or people who uh, sleep with a good dinner which was rich in protein okay you can see a graph here okay so pre uh, a person who had pre sleep protein or they had uh, a protein rich dinner the muscle uh, maintenance the muscle protein synthesis is much higher as compared kindly it is the 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 number is kind, very uh, approximate to double okay as compared to a person who didn't have any protein rich dinner okay just before their sleep so you can see here the muscle protein synthesis how how much varied it is okay uh you can uh, pro homemade protein powder uh, you can make some laddus and all okay using some nuts peanuts and all you can make some laddus and all or you can just uh, make a ro dry roast these peanuts and groundnuts and grind them and then use it in your drinks etc okay if, you, if even if it is a glass of milk or something you can put this in the glass of milk and have it that's a very good source of homemade protein powder but it also has a fat content okay next is if you are making these paneer at home okay when you make paneer at home the whey water okay when you separate the paneer from the uh, from the entire that liquid that forms okay when the milk has curdled paneer has been formed and there's a remaining liquid that's whey protein so instead of throwing that away try to incorporate that particular water Uh, while making atta etc okay while like making a dough wheat dough or any uh, any uh, multi grain that you are using or any uh, local local grains which are using when you make a chapati or you make any dishes out of a flour okay when you make a dough out of it instead of using plain water try to use this whey protein water okay so don't waste that water so it's a very good high content it has a very high content of protein so the whey protein what you get outside okay usually they uh, they use industrial machine industrial grade machines to dry this water out and make it into powder form okay so you can't do that at home so the best for, uh, version available for you is to incorporate this water into your cooking okay peanut butter is a good source of protein but you have to be careful about the fat content of it okay if you are incorporating peanut butter on a daily basis try to reduce a bit on your visible fat which you use in your cooking so uh, why you have you should eat protein before bread um, before you go to bed so it increases your total dietary protein intake like whatever if as i said earlier it is quite challenging for one to maintain a specific amount of protein grams every day so you at the end of the day you can sit back and just count how much protein you had whatever is the difference amount okay just have that particular source uh, as a dinner it it, should, it will be easy on stomach as well as it will give you the protein requirement okay instead of cooking some ex, um, some entire meal uh, out of scratch if uh, for example if you have, if you are lacking in uh, like 20 grams of protein okay uh, remaining uh, grams you had fulfilled du during the breakfast snack and lunch time only 20 grams of protein is remaining for your per day quota have a boiled egg okay that can give you the specific amount of protein okay so it will replenish your lost muscle mass milk 
milk, no, not before dinner, milk, I would suggest if you want to have a glass of milk, have that after dinner. Okay. Yeah, just before sleep, just, uh, just an hour or 45 minutes before you go to sleep, have a glass of warm milk, not cold. Have a glass of warm milk, not not uh, and not just piping hot milk. Okay, don't have that. You will lose your sleep. <clears throat> have just a glass full of warm milk. Okay, it will induce good sleep. If you have any arthritis problem or any minute body aches or anything which you are suffering throughout the day, having a glass of warm milk will induce good sleep in you. It will relieve you from your body aches. And it is also a very good source of easy protein, okay? <clears throat> it's, good for, uh, it's good for the morning. Dry fruit and seeds and all, no, whatever you have, this blood dose, etc. It's good for the morning. Why? Because uh, it, it, it not just gives you protein, but it also gives you fat, okay? It has high fat content, dry fruits and seeds. So if you have it in the morning, there are high chances that these fat will also be utilized throughout for energy throughout the day, okay? At night, you are just sleeping. You are not that active. Your, your body works only at the basal metabolic rate. So don't pour too much of fat into your last meal of the day. So protein can in, uh, increase your synthesis overnight, muscle uh, protein synthesis overnight. And a combination, there's a combination of casein as well as leucine, okay? Leucine is a kind of protein, any any uh, protein source which is rich in leucine, that is uh, that you should focus more at night, okay? As well as casein also, casein and leucine, they both help in your muscle protein synthesis, okay? If you're targeting, if you're specifically targeting your muscle protein synthesis, um, you have to incorporate not just any protein, the proteins that are rich in casein and leucine. The, uh, the examples of these are given. Uh, leucine examples are given on page number 85. That's a small table. You can just go through that. And even some examples of casein are th uh, listed throughout the textbook. Okay, So just read about it. So yeah, uh, the different types of foods, examples of foods are given from page number 84 to 89. So when you read all this, apart from the studies mentioned, various examples and why these examples are a good source of protein for athletes, they have given it with reasoning. Just take your own time and just read, just read it, okay? No need to mug it, mug it up, just read it. This, this page number for food sources, page number 84 to 89. Placebo group is the one uh, to which you have not given any kind of protein. You gave them some kind of food, okay? But the the protein uh, the protein quality uh, quality which you are testing that test food was not given to this placebo group, okay? It was given to other few groups, okay? So placebo groups they they received some kind of food, they received some kind of protein, but it was not the test protein, okay? So chocolate milk, they focus a lot on chocolate milk soon after your workout, okay? Not at night, not before sleep, because if you have chocolate just before sleep, you will find it hard falling asleep because chocolate has a bit of uh, caffeine content as well as other stimulants, which will keep you up throughout the night. It will not induce good sleep. So avoid having chocolate milk at night, but during the day, soon after your exercise or workout, Okay, chocolate milk, having a smoothie or cold chocolate milk, okay, it's a very good option. It will replenish uh, your protein requirement. It is affordable, convenient, not hard to make. Okay, and when you are using a chocolate flavored protein powder or chocolate flavored um, milk mixes, it naturally comes with white chocolate. Why we are focus focusing on chocolate here, you can incorporate some electrolytes the manufacturers they can incorporate some important electrolytes and minerals without changing the taste of the milk so that you will only taste the chocolate component of it okay but you will not taste the extra added 
electrolytes and minerals so the chocolate flavor will mask that so that's the reason why they, they are focusing more on the chocolate milk okay also it gives you chocolate is it gives you a good shot of energy it's a stimulant it's a mental stimulant it keeps you happy it will it will not depress you and it it will just keeps you good it will keep you go go on on towards the day so carbohydrate protein fluid as well as calcium it will since it's the milk milk is a beverage and you can include it through or for your hydration purposes as well okay milk milk which can be used here is any milk if you are lactose intolerant you can go for other plant based option if you have any doubts regarding this please um, put it in the chat box or you can contact me personally so only the important points from the entire chapter i have to the uh, remaining is mostly of the uh, about the studies what they have done and other uh, other other examples of different kind of food sources 